What's up guys, Mike Dakota here. I haven't done a Spodge video in a long time, so I'm going to do this uh, one of the problems I solved. It's like the next problem. I think it was the arithmetic progression. I don't think I did that yet. I'm kind of like jumping over one after the other one. Yeah. Complete the series. All right, so basically, um, you have an arithmetic progression. Arithmetic progression is basically like uh, if you add, you're just adding the same uh, same number over and over again. So in this case, like 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. Here, we're just adding 2 every single time, right? So 1 plus 2 is 3, 3 plus 2 is 5, 5 plus 2 is 7, 7 plus 2 is 9. Right, they all have a common difference. Okay, so now our job is simple. Um, you're given the third term, and then the third to last term, and then the sum of the series. So now you need to print the length of the series and the series. So you have to print the length of the series and the series. So here we have 3, 8, 55. So the... Um, the third to last, the third term is three. So we have one, two, three. Uh, the third to last term, as you can see in the end, is eight. That's right, so that's eight. And then the total sum is 55, right? So then that's the sum of all these numbers, 55. So basically our job is just to, uh, given these third term, third to last, and total sum, we're just going to reconstruct the whole array. So we just have to print the, the length of the array and then the whole array. All right, so I'm just gonna explain my solution because uh, I kind of got AC'd in the first half, so it's not that difficult. Yeah, I just brute forced. All right, so here I read in the number of test cases and then I did T minus minus. So here I'm gonna read in X, Y, and Z. Uh, so X is the third term, Y is the third to last, Z is the uh, total sum, right? So what did I do first? Well, first I subtracted the third to last term from the third term. So I did f is equal to y minus x, okay? And then I had this number called n is equal to 6. So that's just 6. And then what I did was I had a number a1 is equal to 0. So this is going to represent like the first term, okay? So then what did I do? I basically just brute forced every single um, possible number, common difference that you could possibly have, right? So like uh, from like, I don't know up to 1 million, right? So I'm just like going through all the possible different common differences you could possibly have, right? And then what am I gonna do, all right? So I'm gonna take the difference between the six, so the difference between the third to last term and the third term, and I'm gonna divide it by n minus five. And why do I do that? Um, so I could actually show you guys why I do that. So hold on, let me just get my trusty here. Real quick, if you like, if you if you look at it, you'll understand why. So, like, let's say we had like six numbers: one, two, three, four, five, six, right? And the, uh, uh, let's see. Actually, let's go back. Let's go back to the example. Okay. Um, okay. So let's say we have three, which is the third term. Uh, there's ten numbers, right? Uh, three and then third to last just is uh, what was it? Three, eight, eight. Uh, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, actually, let me just clear this one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So this is eight. It's third to last, and this is the third term. Okay. So what am I gonna do? Let's go back to my solution that I did, which is kind of a lousy solution, but it does work. All right, so here, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to brute force all the possible, possible common differences that you could possibly have for each, between each number. So between each adjacent number, we check this and this, right? So I'm gonna brute force every single possible combination I could possibly have. So here, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the difference between the third to, uh, third to last term and the third term, so y minus x. So what does that do? That takes this third to last term eight, and then I'm gonna, so this third to last term eight, and I subtract the third term, which is three, which gives us five, right? Then what am I gonna do? Uh, I'm gonna take this number, and I'm gonna divide it by n minus five. So what does that do? So if I take this number, five, and I divide it by n minus five, so currently there are, um, there are, uh, 
the common difference that you possibly have here currently is uh, that we have here is, um, let's see. I think I did it because, yeah, yeah, okay. So I did, did n minus five because, um, so originally I put six because six is like, let's say we're guessing that six. And then we're just going to go through like all the possible numbers from like the common differences between uh, six to like uh, uh, a million, right? So then the reason why I do n minus five is because if you take five and divide it by five, you get one. So that's gonna give us the common difference between these two, these two, these two. So right, so this will be plus one, plus one, plus one, plus one, plus one, right? So that gives us one. That gives that because give us that common difference. And then I'm gonna set my um, third term and then subtract two times this difference. So what does that do? So this third term, right? Three minus two times the common difference of one. So two times one, which is gonna give us one. So this is gonna give us the first term, right? So if I take have the third term and I subtract by two times the common difference, I'm gonna get the first term. So that's what helps you, right? Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to check the summation and see if it actually equals to the total sum. So I know this is kind of really strange, but this is like a decent equation. So like, uh, you might think that this is like really difficult, but this is uh, basically what I'm doing is I'm just plugging it into the formula. So I'm doing like uh, two times by the first term plus n minus one times by d. So this is gonna give us the uh, summation of the, uh, yeah, yeah, so it's basically I'm doing n times, I'm basically doing this uh, equation that does the common difference, given the common difference and you just check it. Um, you can actually search it up. So sum of arithmetic progression formula. So yeah, this is a this is the formula when the last term is not given. So what you're doing is you're taking the first term two times by the first term plus n minus one, which is like the number of numbers you have, and then multiply by the common difference d. You add them up and then you multiply by n and you divide by two. So that's like the summation formula. So I'm just checking that to see if that works, right? So if this does work and it's equal to the total sum of z. So remember z is the total sum that they gave us. So if that works and I just break. And when I break, I just print out the number and I just print out uh, each common difference. So I print out n with the number of numbers and I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna loop through from one to n and I'm just gonna add by the common difference. So that's basically what I'm doing here is that um, once I have like the common difference, I'm just loop from here to the end of n Right, and then I'm just gonna add one every time. So I have one and I'm gonna plus one, so that's gives me two, and I plus one and I get me three, and I plus one and get me four, and so on and so forth, until I reach n. So that's basically how I did this problem. Um, what I'm doing is I'm just going to go brute force and go through every single possible number of values of n to infinity, and get the common difference by dividing it by n minus five, right, because uh, we could assume you divide by n minus five from third to third to last term, you get each uh, each the common difference here, right? And then what I'm doing is I'm just gonna find the first term by subtracting two times the common difference from the third term. So three, two, uh, three minus two times the common difference of the first term is gonna give us the one. And then from there on, I'm just going to just check if the this whole equation is right. Like the summation of arithmetic progression is actually equal to our n sum. If it is, I break and I just start uh, printing out the common difference again. But otherwise, I just, uh, yeah, that's it. So in the end, you, you should be able to get your value if you go through every single possible uh, number of values of one to, uh, to six to infinity, or not six to infinity, six to, to a million, because the constraints are a million. Yeah, um, this is how I did the problem. It's kind of messy. You might find a different, a better way to do this problem, but yeah. Very calm, subscribe. I'll check you guys later. Peace.